Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got our guest host, Buster Rhymes and Claudia Jordan. Buster Rhymes' album is out right now. Yeah. Blockbuster. Yes. So recently we had a conversation with Swizz. Yes. And I asked Swizz uh, how he got himself, <laughs> Timberland, and Pharrell. Now Buster, a couple of, probably about a month ago, said he's doing an album where Pharrell, Timberland, and Swiss Beats are the EPs. How? How does that happen? You know, Buster is somebody that don't back down easy. Mm -hmm. You can't tell him no. And he signed us up for his project. <laughs> and, and we just said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and he came, he's like, you know, uh, you, Tim, Pharrell, y'all my producers for the project. I'm like, okay. No, the executive producers. Okay. <laughs> and then, I don't know, like somehow we actually all got into a space, which is a photo of us on this boat. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, yo, he really manifested this. Like, wow. we didn't even plan to be on that boat at that time. It's not like, okay, let's have an executive producer boat ride. Like, we just uh, all ended right. up mm -hmm. sitting there. And I'm looking around like, okay, I hear the universe. Okay, I guess we're doing it. So, so I, 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 where, where did you come up with the idea to have all three of those great producers EP so, your project? MV, I'm going to tell you the truth. Pharrell created that day. Mm -hmm. with all of us coming together. Pharrell invited us to this unbelievable yacht. We was in Miami, all of us in the, in Miami chilling. We come to the yacht, everybody's there, we pull up. We rocking on the yacht, vibing, we eating food, we drinking, we smoking cigars, we vibing. Swiss had just finished working on DMX, rest in peace DMX. Last album, mm -hmm. his posthumous album. And there's a, a table on the yacht on the upper deck level, mm -hmm. and we all sitting around that, and we were just talking for a few hours. We was on the, I, I believe we was on the yacht probably probably like eight hours that day. Mm -hmm. About four hours into the to the day, it just kept going really really crazy in my mind, and I'm sitting here with three of my brothers, all 25 plus year relationships. Mm -hmm. Brothers, they all produced on all of my shit, excuse me, mm -hmm. they all produced on all of my work, my projects at some point or another, whether it was two out of the three of them or all three of them or one out of the three of them, right? And I'm like, yo, I'm looking at them and they looking at me, they looking at each other, we talking, ain't nobody bringing up no music. It was no music talk outside mm -hmm. of the DMX album. Mm -hmm because Swiss wanted us to hear it. Mm -hmm. But all the other conversation throughout the day was just regular conversation. I'm like, listen, I just need to say this to all three of y'all. Ain't no way in the world that I'm gonna get off this boat and not tell y'all that this is not gonna be a moment where we shouldn't be discussing doing a Bust the Rhymes album <laughs> where all of y'all producing it. I don't care what, I ain't taking no back talk. Mm-mm. Started off as an EP. Two songs from Swiss, two songs from Pharrell, two songs from Timberland. We get through the two, the, the six records. I just was like, wait a minute now, I'm not feeling like this is enough, because I'm not an EP dude, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm an album dude. And the energy that was feeling and sounding so incredible from them six records is set the standard for what the rest of the album should feel like and sound like. And mm -hmm. what was dope about the album when it was just those six songs, was every song felt like feel good energy party and turn up records. Mm -hmm. Coming off an of ELE2 album, we was speaking directly to what was happening. From, we was in the pandemic, the protesting was happening, the, the, the riots, the, the, the George Floyd murders mm -hmm. and all of the, you know, I, it was too much dark energy, mm -hmm. but it was necessary at the time and it was, a beautiful body of work in, in, in an installment that was needed for the time. Right. Them six songs felt like I was back in my put your hands chamber and party going on, on over here and everything remains raw and mm -hmm. it felt like we was in that bag all the way with just them six songs. 
And I was like, I ain't got enough of this. I need more of this. So as I was playing it for people, they wanted to be a part of that. Mm. From the new artists to other producers. And the, the, it just it, it just kept evolving. And I, and I got to ask, so, you know, people have been hitting me this morning. And I thought about it, too. Aren't you on tour? I just came off tour on the 21st of November. Okay, because I've seen, I seen you and 50 on tour <laughs> all over the place. I see Fifth still on tour. I'm like... Shouldn't the bus to be overseas somewhere? Five, five months on the road. Fifth is still on the road. He's rocking probably until like December 23rd, I think. He mm. in India and Mumbai mm. and Bahrain. My last show was at the O2 in London. Mm -hmm. It was our third English show. We did two O2 sold out shows in one Wembley arena. Wow. July 21st to November 21st. I come home on the 22nd. 23rd was Thanksgiving. 24th dropped the album album release party, private location. So you never, you never stop working. I, I ain't stop. Well, well, hold on. Let's let's get into a record. We're going to come back with Buster. Yes. Let, now, this is the, 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 the record with your kids on it. What's yes, the name of the record? It's called Legacy. Legacy. Big up, big up Trillion, my young spitter. Big up my beautiful daughter, C, and big up my other beautiful daughter who plays cl classical piano, uh, Rye. And, 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 and big up to Mars and big up to, to, to all of the other producers that assisted in the production with Mars and mm -hmm. I just need y'all to enjoy that this DNA is very real in this royalty bloodline over <laughs> here y'all. I want to ask you so it seems like you're really good at manifesting things and making things happen like you have just like you are speaking things into existence so how about here in the Breakfast Club since this is your first time here <laughs> who is it that you have not worked with or that you're like a dream collaboration if you haven't done it already is there someone out there that you're like look this would be like it for me. Yeah, who haven't you worked with? You didn't work with damn near everybody. Yeah, I ain't worked with Cole yet. I want to work with Cole. J. Cole. I'm a huge fan of J. Cole. I'm sure he's listening right now, J. Mm -hmm. Cole. I'm a in. huge fan of J. Cole. I'm a huge fan of Jid. Jid? Mm -hmm. Jid is crazy. Shout to Jid. Jid is crazy too. Big shout to Jid. Huge fan of Drake. Love to work with Drake. Mm -hmm. Huge fan of. There's a singer. I love Friday's work. I love, there's a young lady, what's her name, Coco Jones? Oh yeah. Yeah, Coco Jones. Coco She's Jones dope. is She's incredible dope. to so me. Dope. She's incredible to me. I'm a huge fan of Janelle Monae too. Mm -hmm. And um, they got a new artist out, I forget his name, but he sound like Marvin Gaye. That's October. Um, October. Uh, London. London. Yeah, 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 yeah. He sounds he's, so yep. crazy. Yep. Yo, so dope. So crazy. Like, dude is. I only heard the one song. It cut deep. Go to his page and mm -hmm. just follow him. He is amazing. His brother sound, is unbelievable. Absolutely. And you know who else too? I can't yeah. front. Toby and Wigwe. Toby and Wigwe. Yeah. He's yeah. incredible he to dope. me. He dope. Big up to Toby. He dope. Love, dude. Oh, by the way, let me take a second to just big up my brother Bun B. You know what I'm saying? The record that we we did on the album with the baby. On, on Blockbuster with the baby and T Pain. Big up to Bun B for clearing it. Rest in peace to Pimp C. Of course. Salute to Zero. Big up Jeezy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think Hove has something to do with yep, the yep, song yep, too. Yep, yep. But and whoever the producer is, big every last one of them up. But Bun B, you know that's my that's that's who I interact with. Frequently, mm -hmm. and Bun B, I just want to thank him for blessing me with the clearance. I want to thank Bun B for the big up that he just gave recently on the Twitter, and just shouted us with, with how proud he felt we 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 did with all three of us, and he called it the trifecta. That's dope. With me and T Pain and the baby, and big up the baby and big up T Pain, and big up every damn body on my album. Big them up, my kids. Quavo. I'm going to get into the whole shout out mm -hmm. list after we finish running through some more of these songs. But yeah, man, those are the names that I'm feeling right now. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving out a couple, but off the top, those is, that's where it's at. Okay. And I had to ask, so... You, Thank you so much, Claudia. For sure. How, how did you decide, you know, the, the one thing I would say about Buster is you always had your, your hold on the legacy OG artists and also the younger artists, right? Yeah. So, you know, back then you you would do a record with Slick Rick or yeah. Rakim, but then you do a record with Coyle Ray and The Baby. Absolutely. So, so I, what made you want to do the records with those individuals, like a Coil Array? The new even, artists. Even with the video, yeah, the Luxury Life, which is a, a, a redone of uh, Foxy and Hov. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm going to always give it up to the, to, the, to the timeless greatness, art, and contribution that put.
pushed the culture forward. Mm-hmm. And it also evolved the culture because when them records was happening, when we was doing it, you already know, mm-hmm. that 96 to like 2001 was probably the most lucrative time in hip hop, mm-hmm. period. So big up the Hove, big up the Foxy on clearing that. And um, as far as the new artists with the Coil of Rays and the Beers, mm-hmm. the Baby, Quavo and Moray and Young Thug and Giggs and Young Blue and Blast and all of these new artists. For me, on this album in particularly, I just felt like I needed to speak to both generations real quick. Mm-hmm. When I said what I said at the BT Awards, I was trying to speak to both generations. I wanted the young generations to know that we love them. Mm-hmm. We support them, we admire what you're doing, and I'm I'm not gonna really do this entertaining of this this this, this little bugged out propaganda and this this little narrative of you know the, the elder statesmen and the OGs don't respect it mm-hmm. as far as what y'all are doing is concerned. We do, and there's a lot of us that like it, a lot of us that love it, a lot of us that's fans of it, and I'm gonna speak for me. Mm-hmm. Because I come from a group with a legacy and a name that we had to fight to earn and was called Leaders of the New School. I'm always gonna do that. And I think culturally even deeper than the name, which is why the name was something that was greater than a name for us, it was an attribute, was we wanted to live this name. When you live it, it's an, it, it's, it's an attribute because it's attributed to the way you actually carry your action out. Mm-hmm. So for me, Leaders of the new school from a cultural standpoint came from, and our community is black children in the so-called urban community. We want to always pull up as the ones that discovered the new thing first. Of course. Whether it was the new pair of sneakers, whether it was the new denim suit from Levi's, mm-hmm. whether it was the new um, battle from Cold Crush and Foursome C's, mm-hmm. Kumo D and Busy B or the new whip, everything new, we love culturally to be the one to, to stunt and show off and say, we putting everybody else on to something. Mm-hmm. That means you are about leading the new from a cultural place. This is the way we live. Culture is a way of life. So ultimately, if I'm going to be this person from when I started, and this is all I know, culturally, mm-hmm. this ain't a style thing. This is a way of life thing. Mm -hmm. I like leading the new. I was also taught and raised to believe that you can't put a timeline on greatness. Correct. So at the end of the day, you're not going to tell me because of my age or because of my legacy and the time that I put into this professionally that I'm not going to be in tune because I make a conscious effort with keeping my finger on the pulse. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm in the street every night for real. Mm-hmm. I'm going to call a DJ up for real. I'm going to send you my record myself for real. Do you think that's a lost art form? We're talking to Buster Rhymes. He's here. And the reason I say that is, like I was saying to you earlier, Buster, is, there is no more of, well, I'll have my label people call, right? right? When I was a small DJ and I only had one hour a show, one hour a week, Buster would call that one line for a record. If I'm DJing and I'm calling club, your cell phone. Yes. Buster would would come pull up to the club and Buster still does that. Mm-hmm. Most of these artists don't do that no more. Maybe they don't respect the DJ as, as much or they don't respect radio. What makes you still have the grind to do it? You don't have to. You, you're financially secure. You're oh, great. Um, but you still do the things that a new artist would do. Why? I love it too much. I care about it too much. And I was also taught being 5%, you ain't going to sit home and wait for a mystery guard to bring you food. Say, Mr. Regard, you're going to sit home and wait to bring you food. He also bestowed the blessing and the gift and gave you the ability to have a life that exists in real time and space for you to go get it yourself. Right. That's the blessing in itself. What you've been gifted with to exist and have and be able to be acknowledged for just existing is the gift itself. So instead of me waiting and asking somebody to do something that I could actually do, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to appreciate the assistance. I got a support system, of course. But I'm not relying on the support system as if I ain't gonna do nothing, and it's the res- it's the responsibility of the support system alone to secure the win for me. Mm-hmm. 
My children ain't my support system responsibility. They mine. Right. right. So regardless what my support system is doing, the most high don't owe not even my support system another five seconds. So mm-hmm. he wiped everybody off the face of the earth and still got to live and die on my own iniquity at the end of the day. And besides all of that, bro, I like the space that I'm in right now. Mm-hmm. I'm a happy mom. I, I like I'm, to see I'm, happy. I'm happy as hell, Envy. I'm super duper happy. So for me, I'm really in a space where I'm enjoying my life. I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm enjoying what I'm creating. I'm enjoying that I'm making records with my children when I used to have to make records for my children. I love that you're speaking on this because I know we did speak about the the disconnect with, between some artists. Clearly not you because you are opening the, the 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 pathway, the lines of communication with these younger artists. But there are some people that don't respect the older generation and, and vice versa. I love that you're speaking on that because I think we are in this microwave society where a lot of people think they don't they don't know the hard work that the people that came before them had to put in. So what would you say to someone that has the talent, that has like everything about them that could be a star, but they don't have that grind. What would you say to them? Because you are here mm-hmm. at 5.30, you was on time. Thanks for that question, mm-hmm. Queen, because I think this is one of them questions that is gonna allow me to say something that I've been longing to say. Okay. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of answers that I wanted when I was trying to get myself together in the earlier stage of my career, and I was blessed enough to have a Chuck D that gave me my name a Big Daddy Kane that would allow me to come to his crib in the Jamaica Estates in his multi-million dollar home when he had the purple burgundy bands with the gold AMG deep dish rims, <laughs> right? Not AMG deep deep dish rims, it was hammer deep dish rims, I don't remember the hammer brand. The bands, yeah. It was hammer joints. And Botts was his manager and he used to let me come there and sit down and just watch the TV and ask questions and you know, see, ch- you know, chicks pull up and they, who would cook in the c- c- kitchen and Paris for me, PMD, Eric Sermon, they would let me come to their crib. And this is when they was like on a second or third group album. Mm-hmm. And I bought my first whip in like 93. It was a forerunner that I bought in Queensbridge, or a secondhand car lot. And I bought this car. I drive out there and Parrish had a bunch of real estate. He had property all over Long Island. Mm-hmm. He had Schumer Management, EPMD, and they was the first dudes that I was actually seeing do things outside of just being artists. Mm-hmm. The diversifying of the portfolio was like the first time that I was seeing this. Mm-hmm. So I was asking questions and I was getting the answers from the elder statesmen to me. I was the young and I was the new dude and they felt good about sharing that with me. Mm -hmm. I understood at that point, them dudes was walking in a purpose, and I know that as much as I needed it and it helped me, there's one thing I think Denzel said on the gram one day that I saw in a post, he was like, you can't go to your grave with the U-Haul truck. So everything that you got, you can't take it with you. I'm gonna give it away because I ain't got no choice. I'm in such a blessed place in my life, I don't need you to give me back nothing other than the reciprocal love that I've given you. Just give me the same respect. But more importantly, the thing that I'm gonna need for you to give me is that if you are a new artist, then I'm gonna make the time to sit with, build with, and walk in my purpose and share the information and give you the keys and give you the answers to the deep sea scroll and when you open up Pandora box, I got the answer with, on what's inside of the Pandora box for your ass too. Only thing you can do for me is be successful in showing me how much you're gonna apply the information I'm giving you mm-hmm. and secure the win and make what I'm giving you yours and evolve it into something else and give it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. I don't wanna, I, don't, I ain't even interested in signing no artists. I don't even want that. I don't, I don't. I don't want to deal with none of that. I want. I just want to empower people at this point in my life. I, be your own boss. Be, I don't want to take a piece of your this or a piece of your that. Just you shine. 
But pull up though, and let me give you this thing, because this thing that I'm gonna give you, it actually should come with an invoice. You need to pay me for this information. Mm -hmm. But I don't want nothing from you but to see you secure the win. But to see, but the problem with that, Buster, and we're talking to Buster Rhymes, he's here, the album is out, Blockbuster. There's a lot of people say they're a boss, but they don't know how to be a boss. Yeah, absolutely right. It's cool to be like I'm a boss. You're right. It's cool to be. And but you have to learn. You have to learn what that means. You're absolutely. And a lot right. of people they need to sign to somebody because they need somebody to show them the way. You're absolutely right. A lot of people can't do that. And a lot and, and I think with, with this day and age, people, I'm a boss, but people feel like they don't want to work for somebody. Nah, you absolutely right. They don't want right. to put the grind in. They don't want to sign to somebody. They don't want to do it. But we've all been to a places where we had to learn. Mm-hmm. I think social media made a lot of people arrogant that have that have not done the work to One earn their arrogance. One trillion percent, Queen. Like really, mm-hmm. a post. One trillion percent right, no, of what you saying. Yeah. One trillion percent of what you saying, Envy. Reason why I don't want to sign no artists right now is because I don't respect unappreciative artists when you sign them and help them blossom and blow and develop and evolve and grow and become great, and then they act like you ain't had nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. I get out the way. Show me you could do it on your own. Mm-hmm. But see, if I'm not signed to you, the obligation ain't the same. When I'm giving you now, I don't owe you nothing after that. Take what I'm giving you and know that it's so priceless at the end of the day. You actually owe me mm-hmm. by getting this information and using it and being successful with what I'm giving you. And that's the only way you can reward me. And if I keep it on that place, I don't got to chase you for the bag. I don't got to chase you for the the money you owe me. Mm-hmm. I don't got to have accountants order, audit nothing. I don't got to have lawyers block clearances or block this or block that because now that's going to change the dynamic of the respect, the relationship, and the willingness to just listen to each other. Mm-hmm. I lived through this experience. I'm going to tell you the best part about my happiness right now mm-hmm. is making those hard decisions to remove everything that was blocking my blessing. Mm. Yep. Have you always had this um, perspective? or No, is it I that didn't. Came, because you came in here giving flowers to everyone. You mm-hmm. started off your, your time here giving flowers to Envy. Mm-hmm. You just spread the love to everyone here, right? And I, it's a very mature perspective. Thank you, Queen. Did that, how long, like, when did this happen? Was this recent? Was, did, were you always like this? Nah, I never, I, ne- I, my, I didn't always have the perspective of understanding how to become this happy. Mm-hmm. I've always had the perspective of being a flower giver and a giver of love. Mm-hmm. I love to give love. I love to acknowledge people for their greatness. I'm super comfortable in my space. I don't compete until it's time to respectfully compete. And I'm not a disrespectful competitor because I don't disrespect people. You don't know me for having beef with nobody in the industry. Mm-hmm. I'm not known for dissing no artists on no record. I'm not known for getting dissed by artists on no record because I make sure that the relationship as men and as humans, like we're not gonna compromise the integrity and the moral compass and code of ethics right. and principles. We're not gonna do that because Right. Dudes is just misconstrued and living these lies, which is these alter egos and personas we got walking around here on some superstar business. Like, no, because see, I'm not calling your phone. I'm not getting on social media to diss you. If you somebody that me and you got a difference or a issue or a conflict, I'm gonna call your phone. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say Buster's had beef before, but if you ever see Buster, he will pull up on you. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna come see you. Doesn't matter if you're in the club, if you're in a restaurant, if you out, he wants to pull up and he's gonna have a conversation. We with need you. to get back to those days. I, I respect that. And, and Buster will have a conversation until it's finished. Until it's finished. <laughs> no, no, I'm no, I'm serious. Really? Buster can walk in the club at two thirty <laughs> and it's not finished till five. <laughs> Buster's not. When y'all finish, y'all either gonna hug or, you, or, or y'all gonna shake hands and walk the other way. That is, I've seen it a zillion one times. Wow. And I always respect it. But let's let's get into another record off the album. Let's do it. What you wanna get into? Let's get into the uh, me. And um, let's touch this me and Young Blue and Blast record. I, I got to big up my man. Um, Miguel. I got to big up Miguel Crazy. I got to big up Salam. I got to big up J. J. Cole. And um, I got to big up Os- Osmosis Architect who produced the joint. And let's just continue to just feed the streets the full course meal. 
This joint right here is called Could It Be You, Bust Rhymes, The Dragon, featuring Young Blue and Blast. Let's go. Let's go. Blockbusters out right now. Busters co host yeah. Claudia Jordan. Download, stream, pick it up. We here. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.